The Isha Sota, the wayward woman, whose husband accuses her of infidelity, she's guilty of secluding herself with another man. And the husband is concerned and challenges maybe she went even further in that seclusion. She's brought to the Beis Hamikdash. She drinks of the special recipe, the concoction, the Mayim Ma'arim. And miraculously, it, Hashem, testify whether she's innocent or guilty. If indeed she crossed that line and misbehaved, she dies a horrific death. But our rabbis tell us that if she's innocent, yes, she secluded herself, but she didn't act out while in there, then she's blessed with fertility, she's blessed with a healthy child. The Imri Emes wonders, why does this woman receive a blessing? After all, she crossed the line. She secluded herself. She was all alone. She violated the rules of modesty. True, she didn't act out while in there, but she crossed the line just by being alone. So if she didn't violate her husband's trust while in the room, so she should be neutral. She should walk away unscathed. But why does she get a blessing? Why does she have a bracha? And the Imri Emma says such a powerful lesson. They're alone, they're in private. They have every opportunity to act out. And in that moment, she holds back. In that moment, she says no. In that moment, she respects and honors a boundary and shows self-restraint. For that moment alone, she's worthy of a bracha, says the Imri Emes. We could do the wrong thing, we can make a mistake, we could find ourselves in the wrong place, but at that time, we nevertheless hold back, we show restraint. That too is worthy of a bracha. That too, Hashem takes notice. We need to take notice. We need to know how important it is because it will give us the courage and the resolve, the power and the tenacity to hold back, to close our eyes, to look away, to have self-restraint. He believes in us. We have to believe in ourselves.